Good afternoon, everyone. Josh is severe weather. Happy Thursday to you. We are going to talk about the tropics as we are not completely finished yet with the season. Maybe a new tropical depression or storm forming here towards the Caribbean over the next couple of days. And we're also going to take a look at what's to come in the longer range, both in the U.S. and across the tropics. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, here's what we're looking at right now. The potential right now still uh, albeit it's not as great as a couple days ago, for a depression or tropical storm to form. The next list on the name would be Nadine, and that system could form nearer to the north of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico by this weekend, eventually tracking towards Hispaniola, Cuba, maybe Jamaica, the Caymans, and the southeastern Bahamas. Uh, so we actually have an aircraft flying into the storm now. I didn't have time to sit there and wait to see what they'd find, but we will take a look at that during this video. And uh, that is uh, part of the video, but first I do want to capture what's going on across the country and uh, pretty quiet weather in the eastern U.S. We have our coolest air mass of the season so far, but temperatures are going to warm back up starting tomorrow. Cool weather, though, across Florida and certainly across the northeast and the mid-Atlantic, but warming right back up across the plains. Now, we are dealing with winter weather here across the Intermountain West tonight and tomorrow across portions of the Central Rockies, Utah, and Wyoming. I'm going to take a look at snow totals in a minute. That system will eventually move on to the plains early next week. We have a chance for some thunderstorms over the central plains, maybe even a little bit of brief severe weather. But overall, a pretty dry pattern across the country here. The northwest gets a storm this weekend, but that moves quickly by. And then we dry out, and then another storm moves into the western U.S. late in the week next week. But overall, we will see below average precipitation nationwide and temperatures will end up above average for most of the country heading into the final portion of October. And then we may see some cooler weather coming down here towards the end of the month. Here's a look at snow totals across the west. And let me move this along here so you can see. We are seeing a little bit of snow across the Cascades today, but heavier amounts over southwestern Montana, western Wyoming, Idaho, all the way down into Utah. Maybe that's where our greatest numbers are going to be through the weekend uh, potentially we see up to 10 inches in the ski areas accumulating and sticking to the ground. And in western Colorado in the four corners, we are going to see a few inches here as well. This system will be winding down by the time we get to Monday night, but uh, we are going to see an early ski season here in the western United States before quieter weather takes over. Now let's talk about the tropics. You can see here on the map two areas to watch in the Atlantic. This one is Invest 94L. And still has a chance of developing. I know it's just 30%. A few days ago it was higher, but I still think there's going to be a window for something to form here as we see a little bit more moisture aloft and we see favorable low amounts of wind shear for the next couple of days. It's not a very big window, and this is not a threat to the United States, but it is something that if you're in Puerto Rico, uh, Haiti, Hispaniola, or, or Dominican Republic, that is, uh, the Turks and Caicos, Eastern Cuba, and maybe Jamaica, you need to be watching. In advance of that, we continue to have a system that has a chance of forming into a quick tropical depression or storm as well. So one of these could still become Nadine, and it's possible even we could see Oscar here in the next three to four days in the Northwest Caribbean. In the Pacific, we are going to see potentially some development as well, uh, southwest of Mexico, but that will not be a threat to land. And then we do have a couple of areas we're keeping a close eye on here across the Western Pacific. No threat to land, though. And we do have a feature to watch here in the Southern Indian Ocean. But relatively speaking, the tropics are pretty quiet for the time being. They may not stay that way much longer, but for the time being, they should stay that way. This is AL-94. We do have Hurricane Hunters flying into the system uh, right now, 2 o'clock Eastern time. I don't have enough data from the center. They're on their way in, though. They'll be in probably by 2.30. So I may come back to this. And then we've also got a 30% area with broad low pressure trying to tighten up here near Honduras, heading towards Belize and the southern Yucatan Peninsula. And that may eventually find its way into the far southern Gulf, the Bay of Campeche. Uh, but it is not going to be a threat to the United States. And here's the reason why. We've got low pressure here east of the Carolinas. That is going to head in this direction. And a powerful front dropping down near the Florida Keys all the way into the Gulf of Mexico and some moisture lifting up and over it towards Texas. That front protects much of the Gulf and the southeastern United States from any tropical trouble. Uh, we do have a ridge building in here, but that will also protect this uh, part of the country here from any tropical trouble. The area we need to watch is starting to form in here, but is missing central thunderstorms. The area here east of the islands is a little bit more disorganized, but has maybe a better chance here in the next day or so. 
So these are really the only two features on the map we need to be even concerned with. But the fact that both could impact land with heavy rain certainly means we need to talk about it here. And that, hence, I'm doing the video just to keep everybody apprised of the situation. As we took a, take a look here over at the Western Caribbean, this is Honduras right here. Uh, this is Nicaragua. You can see there's a little bit of twisting here ongoing, but we don't lack, we don't have the uh, thunderstorm action near the center to get this thing to form quickly like we saw with Helene. This, generally speaking, is projected to continue on this path past the Gulf of Honduras towards Belize and perhaps Chetumal in Mexico, and then it will run out of its chance to develop. If it does try to form when it's coming inland here, there's a slight chance it could become a brief depression or storm by the time it crosses the Yucatan and enters the Southwest Gulf. Uh, this is the track we saw with Hurricane Francine about a month or so ago. However, the difference with that system and this system is that this system has no way of gaining latitude. It's going to continue west and have a, a very small opportunity to form due to the fact that it'll be so close to land, whereas uh, Francine had the chance to get away from land, and once it moved away from Mexico, it was in a favorable spot in the Gulf. But you can see here the western Gulf of Mexico is below average now. Uh, down to 28.29, and that is a lot less favorable for tropical development. The water temps are only in the low to mid 80s, not the high 80s and low 90s. A place to watch would be here in the Western Caribbean, and we also need to watch things across this portion of the basin. Both are favorable temperature-wise still for tropical development. If you take a look here at the departures, they are, remember our average temperatures are now coming down, but they remain well above average mostly over the Southwest Atlantic and the Caribbean. The Gulf is a little above average still, but our numbers are coming down here, and hence we don't typically see storms by November in the Gulf. Uh, one other thing we like to take a look at, this is called the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And basically it's pulses of rising and sinking air that cross the equator in the tropics. When uh, we are in a position where we see things over here, typically that means more action in the Western Pacific and less action in the Atlantic and Caribbean. It promotes sinking air in the Atlantic Basin versus rising air. Uh, the the uh, phases we typically see rising motion and more storms are over in this direction. And you can see right now we are located in phase four heading into five. So this is not our favorable phase. Hence the reason we're not seeing a lot of storms develop. We're seeing systems that may briefly get there, but are going to be struggling due to the sinking air in the upper part of the atmosphere. Now, as we come around here towards the end of the month and into the beginning of November, we are actually going to head into a more favorable phase, despite the fact that it will be November. Remember, we still have another month and a half to go of tropical season. And you can see on the European that it is shown here, it is modeled that the browns indicate sinking air and convergence aloft. But as we head towards greens, we start to see more favorable. Now, the next weekend and, and into next week, we're not exactly in a favorable spot, but Later next week, we see some improvement here over the Central Atlantic, but really we have to get past Halloween and look towards the beginning of November to see a much more favorable pattern. This indicates there could be a, an, a Central American gyre over here by the 31st of the month, and that would promote spreading and that would promote low pressure forming, uh, but it doesn't say exactly where that's going to happen, and this could still be off by a day or two or even by a week. Uh, but you can see here really the next week and a half doesn't favor a lot of storm activity. However, there's one last shot that I do think we could see a few storms, and that may end up being the beginning of the month of November. Uh, taking a look here at the European forecast, just to show you where storms could form, uh, and it is showing here in the next week. Sorry, I didn't refresh that. In the next week, we are below average action here, about 40% of typical activity. As we head to next week, though, we jump up to 50% above average. And that is as we get into that more favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, we may see more than typical. But remember, typical is coming down this time of the year. Now, if you're going to pick a week where we're more than likely to have a system, according to this model, it is between 11.4 and 11.11 or 11.10. So the first full week of the month of November. After that, you can see we start to head back down closer to seasonal averages. And at that point, our averages are coming down. So uh, no guarantee of where there'll be a storm, how strong it'll be, but there's a small chance over the next week or two, better chance week three, and then week four, we start to see that dwindle. Here's the European Ensemble showing you that, yes, it is showing the, the potential for a tropical system heading towards Belize, and also a slightly less chance of a tropical system north of Hispaniola. This time frame is Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern to Saturday at 8 o'clock Eastern, so basically Friday night and Saturday. This is the next time frame, and this will be over land most likely. This could be affecting Haiti and Cuba 
uh, by Sunday night. And then you can see because of uh, land interaction, this system has less of a chance of being around. This system actually has less of a chance due to higher wind shear when we get to Monday. And by Tuesday and Wednesday, the chance for a system is going to fade. So really, we have just the next five or six days to watch. Here's a look at rainfall. You can see where it's going to be most active. Stalled front here, tropical moisture in place over the next seven days. And then we may see a little bit of a break, and then it picks right back up in the Caribbean by the end of October and beginning of November. Look how wet it looks like it's going to be, especially around Jamaica, Haiti, and in the Southwest Caribbean. This indicates that we are certainly going to be watching this region for tropical development, and we'll continue to watch it into the second week of November. And then as we head later towards the middle of November, yes, we need to keep an eye on Central America, but generally speaking, we don't see anything too anomalous or too unusual. All right, so let's take a look here at Invest 94L, and you can see there's still quite a bit of dry air surrounding the southern and eastern portion of our system. The circulation center is probably somewhere in here. These are the Leeward Islands. These are the Windward Islands. Barbados just off the map down here. And you can see, generally speaking, it's on a path to come by just to the north of the Leeward Islands here early in the weekend. Uh, it is not developing quickly. Uh, it is fighting off not much wind shear, but more so dry air at this point. Now we do have aircraft flying in right now and I will show you what they're seeing. And you can see here, it is picking up wind speeds that are close to tropical storm force here on the Northeastern side of the system. But uh, if this is correct, and now we don't have the full circulation in view here, there's not enough of a closed off circulation. So it's basically a tropical wave with tropical storm force winds, but not enough to be classified a tropical depression or tropical storm. Now I'll continue to watch this, but I'm gonna have to stop my video here pretty soon as we wrap things up. If this does form, you can see our tropical models are now in pretty good agreement here that it's going to swing by just to the north of the islands here tomorrow afternoon and evening. And then by the weekend, it's north of Puerto Rico. And then by Sunday and Monday, heading back on a track as it interacts with a cold front, there'll be a front in here. And that's going to keep this from going out in this direction. It'll, it'll suppress it back to the southwest. And by Monday and Tuesday, more than likely, it's near southern Cuba and possibly even to the north of Jamaica. However, at that point, we could see this system basically falling apart due to higher wind shear. The models don't show that out in here, but they do show that this could be a tropical storm over the next few days. So it doesn't have a great chance, but it does have a chance. And you can see that here on the ship's model. In fact, the ship's is holding on to this system as it slides between Haiti and Cuba and does intensify this to a Category 1 hurricane. And the reason why is that our amount of relative humidity is climbing, the heat content is climbing, and the water temperatures remain pretty warm here, about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind shear stays low until the system gets over into this area, and that's going to be Monday into Tuesday. And as a result, I think at the very worst, we're looking at a brief tropical storm. I don't think we're talking hurricane at this point and um, something that may not even survive by the time it gets to potentially Jamaica. The global models are not impressed with this system. They do have some development of our first disturbance here as it approaches uh, Belize here tomorrow night and then moves inland. But the next system, it doesn't even show a closed circulation here. It just shows a lot of rain and moisture and then that comes to an end. By the way, we were taking a look at the end of the month of October and you can see here, the GFS is trying to spin something back up in the Western Caribbean. Now, don't get caught up with this one model run that tries to bring it into Florida. That may or may not happen. You know, it was trying to do that with a feature we're watching now, but we do need to keep an eye on things down there again towards the end of the month. Here's a look at the Canadian model real quick. It doesn't go out that far, but you can see low pressure heads into Belize and then weakens over Central America. Again, it doesn't have a closed circulation with AL94 at this point. It's got a weak system moving by the Cayman Islands on Tuesday, and what's left of it may head back towards Belize and Honduras and Guatemala by next Wednesday and Thursday, but does not develop our system. This is the European from earlier, and again, same thing here, a weak system here, a non-system here that never really develops, and then it gets sheared apart here by early next week. Here's the ICON model, and this one continues to be a little more aggressive. It does have a tropical depression here and maybe a tropical depression here by this time tomorrow afternoon. Uh, obviously, this is heading across land, so it's just a rainmaker, but this feature, it does continue to indicate it will strengthen gradually into a tropical storm by Saturday night or Sunday near the Turks and Caicos, and then it has it drifting southward towards the north coast of the Dominican Republic, away from Punta Cana, but more towards the Haiti border. This would be Sunday night, Monday morning. Then wind shear picks up, and you can see overall it's going to weaken. Uh, the icon has it strong enough to where it gets lifted out by the trough. The other models keep the remains heading west, 
and we could see the split, kind of like a 7-10 split, where part of it goes west and part of it goes northeast. I talked about that yesterday. Finally, the HVON tropical model does indicate some slow development of this system by tomorrow morning and does have this as a tropical depression and then maybe a tropical storm by this time tomorrow afternoon. It does not strengthen it into a hurricane. You can see it's kind of a lopsided system, but it does have a strengthening tropical storm passing by northeast of Hispaniola early in the weekend. And if this is correct, we could have tropical storm watches issued for the Turks and Caicos and possibly the far southeastern uh, Bahamas, possibly Haiti, uh, and possibly southeastern Cuba. But take a look at this. Because of the wind shear picking up, before it moves towards Cuba, it's already weakening and no longer a tropical system by next Monday, just a brief system. And you can see why on the HMON, this is wind shear. And right now the storm is going to be in a pretty favorable spot to develop as the humidity climbs. But take a look at all this wind shear here coming from our next trough. As we move this along, this is tonight, but as we move into tomorrow and especially over the weekend, you can see there's going to be more and more wind shear. This is uh, coming from the trough here, bringing us wind shear out of the northwest. Our system would be in here and it's going to get hit in the face with wind shear. So it is probably not going to be a long-lived system if it tries to develop. It may be a quick tropical storm that eventually gets killed by early next week. And that would be good news. Um, the bad news is the rain, but we do need some of it, not a lot of it. You can see overall um, amounts stay fairly low across the islands and do pick up as we get to the Turks and Caicos and as we get towards eastern Cuba. We may see on the order of 50 to 60 millimeters of rain. That's a few inches of rain. Uh, but again, this is not a major deal if this is correct. Here's Central America. That's where rain could be heavier and we could be dealing with significant flooding over northern Honduras, Belize, uh, inland southeastern Mexico and Guatemala, maybe El Salvador as well mostly over the weekend and then heading towards mainland Mexico early next week. So uh, again, a, a whole lot of not nothing, but a whole lot of not a lot to talk about, but stuff we still need to watch. So as always, I appreciate your time today and I hope you have a blessed Thursday. I give all the honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a Christian, I am a witness and I do feel the urge to share what's more important than just weather and that's God's love. Um, Paul tells the church of Rome, Romans 8, 31, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who will then condemn us? No one. For Jesus Christ died for us and was raised to live for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm here to declare victory. I don't care who wins the election in three weeks. I am here to declare victory. God has already given us that victory. He declared it when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us and resurrected him. And that is the wonderful news I wanted to share with you today. And that is what drives me to do what I do every day. And I pray that it does for you as well. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, I will spend some time in prayer for you today and tonight. And I'll catch up with you again tomorrow afternoon. Have a blessed day.